Welcome to this video on how to knit a pair of Mary Jane shoes with the stitching around the sole like Doc Martin shoes. These shoes are designed to fit any of my painted Cricut animals. For this pattern, you'll need to know how to do stockinette and garter stitch, basic increases and decreases, and mattress stitch for the seams. You'll need yarn that's the same weight as the yarn you use for your animal in two different colors, one for the main part of the shoe and another for the sole. If you're working in DK or sport weight yarn, you'll need a little less than 10 grams of each color or a total of around 15 grams or half an ounce. You'll also need straight knitting needles that are at least two sizes larger than those you use to knit your animal. The size of needles recommended for the yarn usually works great. I use smaller needles for the animals so that the stitches are tight and no stuffing shows through but clothes need to have looser stitches so that they can stretch and fit better. You'll also need two small buttons, a DPN or cable needle for transferring stitches, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some way to keep track of which row you're on. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started. Here's an example of the finished project. The cast on edge starts at the sole and works up to the strap and button at the top of the shoe. The pattern is the same for both the left and right shoe until you get up to the straps. And since the left shoe buttons on the left side and the right shoe fastens on the right side, we need to knit straps on opposite sides and I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. Let's start at the bottom of the shoe. These instructions are the same whether you're knitting a left or right shoe and I like to knit both of them at the same time. But to help the video go a little bit faster, I won't make you watch me knit both of them. So using a typical long tail cast on, cast on 19 stitches in the color of yarn you want to use for the sole. On row one, knit across, Rows 2, 4, and 6 are increase rows, but I'm going to be using yarn overs for the increases on rows 2 and 4, and then I'll use a stitch called make 1 for the increases on row 6. On row 2, knit 1, yarn over, and knit 8. Then yarn over again, knit one, and yarn over, and then knit eight, yarn over, and knit the last stitch. At this point you should have 23 stitches. Knit across on row three, On row 4, knit 2, yarn over, and knit 8. Knit 
then yarn over, knit 3, and yarn over again. Finally, knit 8, yarn over, and then knit the last 2 stitches. At the end of this row, you should have 27. Knit across on row 5, On row 6, I like to use an increase known as make 1, and it's done by knitting into the stitch just below the stitch you knitted on the right hand needle. It's a little tricky to see where the stitch is on garter stitch rows, but if you look closely and use your imagination, you can see that there are little smiles and frowns. Poke your needle down through the first frown below the needle, pull the stitch up onto the left hand needle, and then knit into it. So the pattern on row 6 is knit 3, increase 1, and knit 8. Then increase 1, knit 2, increase 1, knit 1, Increase 1, knit 2, and increase 1 again. Finally, knit 8, increase 1, and then knit the last 3 stitches. And at this point you should have 33 stitches. Knit across on row 7. Now we're going to form a little ridge around the outside edge of the sole. And we'll do this by working stockinette for a few rows and then making a ridge out of these stockinette rows. So on row 8, just purl across. On row 9, continue the stockinette by knitting across. And on row 10, we're going to form the ridge by knitting each stitch on the needle with its corresponding stitch three rows below. And here's how you do that. First, notice that the purl side is made up of stitches that look like smiles and frowns. Stick the point of your right hand needle down through the third frown down. Now pull that stitch up onto the left hand needle so that you can work with it and then knit it together with the stitch you would normally knit into. And the first and last stitches on the rows are a little tricky to find the third frown down. Continue working this way across row 10, knitting each stitch on the needle with its corresponding stitch three frowns down.
At this point, we're done with the sole color, so leave a long tail for sewing the sole seam with and cut that yarn. Then reattach the yarn that you want to use for the main shoe and purl across. We're actually working on the right side of the shoe, but by purling into the sole color on the previous rows, we create a nice stitching effect around the base of the shoe. Again, it's a little hard to tell which is the right side here, but our next row is a wrong side row. So we'll begin working stockinette with a purl row. On row 12, purl across. Rows 13 through 17 are stockinette. So you're going to knit on row 13 and 15 and 17, and then purl on rows 14 and 16. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you back when you're ready to work row 18. On row 18, we create the base of the opening at the toe. So purl the first eight stitches, and then purl two together four times. Then purl one, and then purl two together through the back loops four times. and then purl the final eight stitches. When you're done, you should have 25 stitches. On row 19, knit 10, decrease with a left-leaning decrease, which is often called an SSK, Knit one, decrease with a right leaning decrease, which is often called knit two together, and then knit the final 10. When you're done, you should have 23 stitches. On row 20, Knit the first six stitches, then bind off 11 stitches, and you should just bind off until you have five stitches remaining. and then knit those final five stitches. And you should have 12 stitches um, in two groups, a group of six on the left and a group of six on the right. Cut the yarn, leaving a tail for sewing, and the remaining stitches will be used to form the back of the shoe, but at this point they need to be transferred in a way that brings the center back seam edges together. And here's how you do that. Uh, transfer these stitches to a circular needle or DPN. 
and slide the stitches for the left side of the shoe off the needle and back onto the left side so that the left and right stitches sit together and could form a center back seam. And if I'm feeling really lucky, sometimes I just take the needle out and stick the needle back in in the way that I need them to be. With these back seam edges touching, we can finish the top edge of the backs of the shoes. However, the right shoe needs to fasten on its right side and the left shoe fastens on its left side, so we need to finish the left and right shoe tops differently. So for the left shoe, slide or transfer the stitches so that you can begin creating a strap on the right side of the shoe so the toe will be pointed away from you. And for the right shoe, slide or transfer the stitches so that you can begin creating a strap on the left side of the shoe. So in that case, the toe should be pointed toward you. Okay, let's start with the left shoe. So we're gonna start working with the stitches on the right side of the shoe with the toe pointed away. On row 21, start by casting 12 stitches onto the empty needle using a long tail cast on. Then purl into the 12 stitches that were transferred. At this point, you should have 24 stitches. Row 22 is the last row, so bind off all the stitches purlwise. And when you get to the final stitch, insert a crochet hook and chain 5 or whatever number you need to fit around your button. And then cut the yarn here and you can just weave it, these ends in. Now let's finish the right shoe. For the right shoe, we need to start working with the stitches on the left side of the shoe with the toe pointed toward you. On row 21, start by casting 12 stitches onto the empty needle using a long tail cast on. Then knit into the 12 stitches that were transferred. You should have 24 stitches when you're done. Row 22 is the last row. Bind off all stitches knitwise. And when you get to the final stitch, insert a crochet hook and chain 5 or whatever number you need for your button. And then cut the yarn here and weave in these ends. Now we're ready to sew all the final seams. So using the leftover tails, sew the back seam using matcher stitch down to the stitching and sew. and then switch colors to the sole seam color and you can turn the shoe inside out and sew the sole so that the seam is on the inside of the shoe. Or another option is to use duplicate stitch on the bottom of the sole and for duplicate stitch you just weave the tail through the stitches following the same direction of the frowns and smiles that need to be connected.
When you're done sewing the back and bottom seams, weave in and trim any remaining ends. Sew a button into position where the strap reaches and then fasten the strap to its button and you're done. And that's it. Now my elephant has a cute pair of Mary Jane shoes to match this dress. If you'd like to knit a dress to go with your shoes, check out my written patterns for now and I'll be adding a video showing how to make it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new videos like the one for the dress. And don't forget to share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.